everyone, welcome to the webinar today and um, I'm very pleased to introduce Wayne Dickerson from uh, JPW Architects in Sydney. Um, over the years, Wayne and the team from JPW have been doing some, some really cool things with Bentley technology and um, I've been fortunate enough to, to spend a day a week with JPW for the past six or seven years helping them with the technology. So it's been a fantastic experience for me at least, um, spending constant time within projects and inside a, a, an architectural firm. Um, I've also been fortunate to watch JPW adopt new technology with, with open arms and, and increase the, the automation in, in the tasks they do. So, um, Wayne, welcome. And, um, you know, why, why would you be interested in automation as an architectural firm? Uh, thank you, Stuart. Thanks for having me in. I think that's probably the the great place to start. I think the the reason why I think is is always a good place to start when you start talking about automation. And I think uh, I like to call it as sort of the challenge, I suppose, that we face on a day to day basis. Uh, what I like to describe as the process of getting from say an idea through to or a concept through to reality. Um, so when like when you're asked what an ideal project workflow might be. Sometimes you, you generally get an answer like this. You know, it just goes from a concept through divine development through to tender and you get a completed building. It's pretty easy. Uh, but really, that's an idealized uh, version of the truth. I think we all know. Um, the reality of the situation is it's a complex process that uh, has interactions that involves a vast number of players and requirements along the way. And it starts to look more like this. Getting a project from concept through to reality is never really a linear path and involves a dedicated team to get a good outcome. Um, there's so many twists and loops along the way, I think. But that's not really where it ends, is it? So what's more common now is something like this, where you actually get multiple iterations and multiple decisions happening along the way. And we're constantly trying to balance those ideas and those more immovable targets like increased cost or times or approvals that we're going along the way. So it's a multidimensional problem. It can feel pretty much like an illusion sometimes, something you need to be addressed from different points of view or different angles. So every day we're sort of trying to balance the issues and there's a wide range of factors, things like brief requirements or changes, responses to client feedback, you know, you've got time constraints, authority approvals, you've got safety and design issues, uh, sustainable design issues you're trying to impl implement, uh, you've got keeping track of those important code requirements, value management, and of course, we've got our design integrity we're trying to trying to hit. But our approach to this is to continually test and experiment with different tools and wide range of tools and finding those tools that complement, I suppose, our process and the processes that we use and to inform our decisions. And those tools can be fully express our ideas to clients and developers and, and authorities and people like that. Because every day, I think, we're just trying to shoot for doing those design iterations and then trying to communicate those ideas to, to the wider audience. So, But one thing is it all has to be done today, doesn't it? So one key factor in our world and everywhere, I think, is the time factor. And it has an impact on everything we do, everything from concept through to the completion of any, any project. Um, the impact time has on, on all of our practices, I think, is it influences the tools we use and how we resource those projects. So taking one of the cues, I think I've shown this before, is the I like to look at it at the impact over the project timeline. And and arguably the biggest impact we can sort of have as a designer, I suppose, is the beginning of the project where you've got that concept and you're developing those initial ideas. And this is where you have some sort of sense of freedom, I suppose. But as the project moves along, you pretty much get this cost of changes start to increase exponentially which leaves us with this sort of small window at the beginning of a process where we try to understand all the complexities of a project and make the biggest impact we can. So I think it's here where I think a lot of offices start to resource their projects, which start to you know, work hand in hand with those BIM workflows where we're upfront, resourcing the projects upfront, hopefully pays off in those BIM workflows in documentation as the project continues along the timeline. And it's a constant marathon, isn't it? Nothing stands still. We end up with... Uh, our key to delivery, hopefully, is what sort of a motto that I like to sort of put together is trying to work smarter along the way. So, and one of those tools that we're using to try and work smarter is obviously com computational design. And for that, you know, hopefully we can actually um, look at it as not an idea of changing our philosophy to design for each project, but it requires a different focus for each project, I think. 
And we're always trying to refine the way we the approach and give ourselves some more time to design. Hopefully, then we can actually do some more collaboration with other architects and consultants and, and clients and contractors. We can both coordinate those things visually and technically, but then uh, document the solution that we've come up with and then hopefully deliver that out to the to the uh, project in some information models and management along the way. So that, that sort of gives us an idea of, I suppose, that question of why we, we're looking for these tools to, to develop that. So... If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.